Good morning, Boston. It's nice to be back, if only for the weekend. Uh, my name is Steve Schweisberg, past president of SAGES, and on behalf of the steering committee and the course directors, I want to take just a short moment to welcome you and introduce uh, the brainchild behind all of this and, and is uh, uh, Dr. Daniel Jones. And Dan said, you know, we do this leadership retreat. I want to do something different. You know, we got a bunch of doctors in Boston. And, uh, and we said, okay, you know, maybe it would be a good idea. And he really drove this idea home. And one of the things that's not lost on me is that we have people from all over the country here that came for this event. And I really think that, uh, Dan, you're on to something and that this is a real act of uh, genius and need. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce the president of SAGES, Dr. Daniel Jones. Well, this is just terrific to have you all here. I mean, this is a lot of old friends and new friends and people coming around and getting together. Uh, so we're gonna have a terrific day. Um, so I welcome all of you to SAGES. I welcome all of you who aren't part of SAGES to think about it. Um, the goals we have are very clear for today. We want to outline the potential leadership roles that he or she can play in complex organizations. We want to describe concrete ways surgical organizations can shape national health care policy. And we have some real leaders in the field speaking to us this afternoon. We want to discuss opportunities to lead change within SAGES and your own institutions. And we want to see how we're going to apply these lessons uh, with your leadership. So, uh, it's all packed in a day. We got some terrific speakers. The real thing is to be transparent. For those of you who are part of SAGES and want to know how do you go from a committee member to a chair to an executive board uh, to president, uh, we're going to try to show you the things that people think about as that progression goes on. We're going to make it very transparent and we're going to give you lots of opportunities to gauge both in the mentors match, we'll tell you more about this afternoon, and an advocacy uh, group that we'll also be putting together. So. Uh, have fun. We have coffee for you and, and, and a lunch, but I think it's going to be a terrific program. Um, our first uh, moderator will be Dr. Ratner. Uh, Dr. Ratner is also a past president of, of SAGES, uh, chief at uh, MGH, and he'll be moderating uh, the next session. Okay, well, uh, let me also extend my uh, welcome, and I apologize for my voice in, in advance, uh, getting over a little bit of a cold. Um, SAGES, to me, has always been a participatory uh, organization. It's, it's truly been a meritocracy, I believe, and it's uh, grown to the size now that it's not the small little circle of friends that it was when I uh, started uh, in the 1990s. Um, so this session, we'll talk a little bit about how to advance in the organization, how to participate. Uh, if you aspire to leadership role in SAGES, I think this will be sort of the playbook on uh, how some of us have been able to participate and uh, rise through the ranks. Uh, I think that in spite of the tremendous growth of the organization, the principles uh, that it has stood on for a couple of decades now still exist. So I think if you uh, if you pitch in, participate, do a good job, then there's a lot of opportunity for upward mobility and, and I continue to see that even as a dead president. Um, all right. <laughs> I guess I'm not quite dead yet. Um, so uh, the first speaker is Leanne Feldman. Uh, Leanne is a professor of surgery at McGill. She's the chief of general surgery. She holds an endowed professorship. Uh, among the uh, many contributions that Leanne has made to SAGES, I think that her work on ERAS and uh, patient care pathways is internationally recognized. Uh, so Leanne, uh, tell us how to engage in SAGES activities and programs. Thank you, David. This is unbelievable. I, I should have take, taken my phone so I could take a picture of it. Everybody, it's a great, it's a great way to spend a, a Saturday. And thank you, Dan, and to the committee for putting this together. So what I'm going to talk about from behind this podium, it's very, very serious. I would have liked to maybe be over here, but I won't be. I'll be over here when I have this. So I'm going to uh, tell you uh, why I decided uh, to focus on SAGES as my uh, home, as my, um, as my society home. Um, I'm going to 
Um, rather than give you, I will give you a list of things that I think are sort of the nuts and bolts, but I wanted instead to tell you about my personal story at Sages, or at least my perspective of my personal story at Sages. Maybe it's wrong. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how I think people can get noticed when they're on a committee, um, how uh, one can pitch a new idea and make it happen at this organization, and I want to talk to you just a little bit about the responsibilities of committee chairs. <clears throat> so why uh, I focused on sages, and I think there's a lot going on in everybody's life. I mean, you have your clinical practice, and a lot of people get involved in this organization as young surgeons, you, you have young families, you may have other family responsibilities. Um, there's a lot going on at the same time, and I think um, <clears throat> to maximize your input um, at any one place or your impact, I think you may have to pick a place and focus on that place. So I, I, I definitely picked Sages. And the reason I picked Sages was I perceived it, and I believe this to be still to be true, is that Sages is open to new ideas. Sages wants new ideas. Sages wants to be at the forefront. And Sages is nimble. Um, I also feel that Sages gets, you get stuff done here. Stuff happens, as, and, and happens in a, in a, sometimes in a very aggressive timeline. Um, and, and I think it's a really fun organization. There's some, there's, there's, you're working and you're meeting great people, but, but, but it's fun and there's an atmosphere of, of a positive atmosphere that you may not have uh, it's your, in your day job. Uh, and also, personally, I've definitely learned a huge amount. I, can't, I don't think in my uh, professional career since leaving formal training that I've learned more in a single place than at Sages. And I don't just mean about um, you know, leadership and how to committees and, and just, I mean like the actual subject matter content of in education, in assessment, in any project that I've been in, I've, I've learned just such a huge amount that I've been able to take back to uh, other aspects of, of my life. For me, it's been a huge opportunity to present research and um, academic work and to have my uh, students and fellows and residents present their work um, and interact with real experts in the field, and that's been a, a huge opportunity for me. It's also uh, been a, pl it's a platform, international platform for, for, your, for your own ideas and for your new ideas, and that's, that's a huge bonus. And, and I've made such incredible friendships with people from all over the world through this organization. So those are, that's why, for me, why I focused on Sages. Uh, just the, I think we're gonna see other slides like this, but I think people are aware of a little bit of the leadership trajectory from, um, from and, and just a little bit of the numbers, and I think they may, these may be off by one or two, but this is about 6,100 members, and there's about 700 committee members. So it's very open to, to getting on a committee. And there's about 100 co-chairs and chairs of committees and task forces. And there's 33 on the board and seven on the executive. But only one Dan Jones. <clears throat> so I want to tell you a little bit just about my own, my own story. Or, so my first meeting that I went to was in San Antonio in 1999. And I was brought there by Jerry Freed. This is how he looks like now. He, he looked a little different in 1999. And his wife, Karen, took me to this meeting and uh, I remember walking along that San Antonio River Walk with them at that time. I was Jerry's fellow. Um, and uh, that, then, so Jerry brought me to Sages, and, and, and it I, seems like I, I haven't left since then. Our, the first poster that we presented at Sages was it, the next year in Atlanta. Um, and then uh, things were going swimmingly. Things were going fantastic for me because uh, I was interested, and I'm still interested, in a lot about patient-reported outcomes. And uh, so I'm, I'm sure that Jerry had something to do with this, but I, was, I got on a committee right away, 2001. Here's the letter. I found this letter. It says basically, this was August 6, 2001. Uh, Bill Traverso, as a president, I invite you to serve on the following committees for this year, two-year term. Outcomes, perfect. Outcomes committee, that's exactly what I was interested in. I'm sure Jerry got me on this committee, and I was good to go. I was on outcomes committee, and that was fantastic, and I think... And, and but this, then, then, and then, but then, then what happened was ACS. The next meeting was in San Diego. That was like six weeks after 9/11. I just didn't, just didn't get there that year. And then, in New York City, the next year, I had a big clinical issue at home, and I couldn't go to the meeting. So that's like the first two committee meetings. <clears throat> so this is the next letter I got. 11 months later, this is July 19, 2002. It says, "Thank you for serving on a committee. We know you're really busy." 
So we're going to rotate you off. We attempt to rotate you off every few years. So this allows those who have served to take a deserved respite while encouraging new members to take an active role in SAGES in the future. And I hope we will be able to call on you again in the future. Sincerely, Bruce Shermer. So I was like, oh no, this is really bad. <laughs> So I, I, you know, and I still, still very into sages. And um, this also was the next year I didn't get to the meeting, because this is March, and I have this little jaundice baby there. He, he lost the jaundice, but so it's a busy time. So I wasn't involved in committees, but I still stayed very involved in sages. And the, the way that I stayed in, engaged with sages, and it wasn't really, um, I don't perceive, I don't remember this being any, any issue for me, but. Our, our big thing then was I, I was very involved in the meeting. We were very involved in research and building a, a research program, building our team, getting having a. It's not that we thought about this, but it's just we had a lot of people involved. We took them all to the meeting. Uh, we we always presented a lot of research at the meeting. We tried to get on as faculty, and we did a couple times. We asked a lot of questions at the. This was advice that Jerry gave me was how to how to have more of a presence at the meeting and ask questions in your sessions. And I think that's great advice and applying for grants and. And that's what we were doing is at the, at the early few years of, of our career was sort of building that kind of research program. But then I got my second chance. So uh, um, in 2007, I was put on the Continuing Education Committee. The chair was Mike Brunt. The co-chair was Danny Scott. So they, these are obviously people that have went on to uh, these are two presidents. And through that, got involved in different committees. And when you oh, got on, a, on the committee, then you start doing abstracts and video reviews. And then I, um, through that work, and I became a co-chair of a committee that Dan Jones was the chair of, and that was back to the outcomes committee. So that was, that was poetic justice. <laughs> and uh, through being a co-chair, you come to leadership retreat, and you start to, to, to engage more with the leadership. Now, my big break at Sages, for sure, in terms of leadership, was the, pro the FUSE project. And that's Steve Schweitzberg's uh, idea and a priority for him in his president year. And that's a good way to, uh, not that I, I was, you know, I, I'm not sure why I was asked to do this. I'm sure people in this room know, have a better idea than, than I do. I don't know, I didn't know anything about energy, for sure. Uh, the, the chair was Dan and Pascal Fuchshuber and I were the co-chairs. And I was, I think, more on the, um, so, like I'm very bossy, so I think it was more like, we need a bossy person to make sure that this is going to get done in the one year that Dan Jones wanted to get it done. And I think oh, that was a little bit of my role there. But the reason why FUSE was a great project to get involved in at that stage was uh, it had very good visioning and a very clear roadmap. It was, there was a lots of stuff to do, and it was very clear what had to be done, and a very aggressive timeline. And Steve really wanted it done for his presidency, and Dan was the guy to do it. And, and the vision there was that Dan wanted and to have the postgraduate course that would lead to a book. And we were like, books? Who reads books? And he had to say it over and over again, because we're going to use the book to do the web material, the web curriculum, so we'd already have it. We only have to do it once. And that was a great idea. And there was a lots of phone calls and lots of emails and retreats at the Longwood Inn. And also... <laughs> <clears throat> and, and also, it was a very close-knit group because there was a lot to do. So we spent a lot of time together, and it was a great way to get to know everybody. Um, we also worked very closely with Sage's staff, very good uh, people in the, in the Sage's staff and the organization uh, who were fantastic. And there was a, lots of projects to be done, and you can involve your own trainees. And it was a relatively high-profile project. So that, that was a very good opportunity to, to, to uh, step up. And then I got to pitch on my own project because this was the enhanced recovery stuff, which we thought uh, from our own work at home was, was a key way to maximize the benefits of minimally invasive surgery and that we had to get involved in all the perioperative stuff. That was something I knew about from home. Uh, and this was during Jerry's presidency, so he, uh, when he was president-elect. Uh, so I'd had a lot of opportunity to discuss it, and uh, I had the opportunity to pitch this to the board at the leadership retreat in 2012. And, and try to put together uh, visioning and a budget and a timeline and got to lead a task force, uh, populate it with, with new people, hear some new ideas, do some writing, getting grants and giving them out. And I followed the same 
basically did what Dan did with the Fuse, which was take our course and write a book and use that for the material. And that was, I just followed the same exact uh, roadmap. And this helped me, of course, then understand how Sages works, uh, the reporting structure and, and who are the people and the people at the Sages office. And that, that, was, a, that was obviously a great opportunity. So that's my Sages story. So when, when I think about these things, so getting on a committee, how do you get on a committee? So basically the committee process is partly a self-nominating process. Anyone can nominate themselves to be on a committee. And obviously you want to identify a committee that aligns with your interests, although sometimes those are full and you may have to go to your second interest, but you want to get involved in the organization. Obviously speaking and writing to the chair and co-chair is a good strategy. And, but the committee members are appointed in the spring, so we do, you, that's just part of the, the year, the annual year, and they're officially point, appointed by the, pres, the new president in the spring. So this isn't rocket science. I mean, this is I just, I mean, obviously, if um, you want to get noticed in any group, obviously the first thing is go to the meeting, right? So if you, 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 you miss the, all the meetings and you miss all the conference calls, you're probably going to get a letter like I got from uh, Bruce Shermer, and then we shouldn't be too, uh, too surprised. So we have to get involved. Um, ans answering emails <laughs> uh, is surprisingly difficult for, for many, many people. Getting on a conference call once in a while is, is surprisingly difficult for, for many people. Um, obviously, you need to make an impression. You're in a room with people. You're on a call with people. We want to at least, you know, hear what you have to say, or at least read what you have to say. Um, and we want to see skills. We want to see what your per uh, uh, perception of a situation is, your input, your opinion, how it works for you at home. You're bringing your experience and your skills to to the group. Um, new ideas. I mean, you always want to hear new ideas, and when you're given the opportunity, clearly you want to deliver. This is your chance, and you want to make, you want to make the most of it. You have to be reliable, and the Sage staff will notice, and they, have, they, will, they will mention to the chair or co-chair, I, 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 can't, I can't get in touch with this person, uh, writing and doing the reviews, doing journal reviews. These are all important ways to contribute. You want to be a co chair or a co-chair? The first thing is obviously you have to be a strong committee member. You want to stand out volunteer, deliver, uh, talk to the current chair, the executive committee, email the president, let Sally know. These are, these are the ways that it works. Um, it's just need to know that this is your interest and, and, and what your vision is. And then I, I'm sure we'll hear more, uh, I assume, uh, uh, <laughs> maybe not, but Dan is, uh, uh, one of his uh, presidential uh, projects is to create more of a, a mentoring program within SAGES that will help uh, people uh, be mentored by current leadership to, to, to ascend. And because having sponsors is important. Having mentors is important, having a sponsor. These are people who know you, know what you can do, and will propose you for a challenging project. And then protect you in a certain way, even if you make a mistake along the way. And you might not even know who th that person is. So that's different than there's, there's mentors and there's sponsors. Responsibility of the committee chairs. So obviously, the, to, I, mean, I think Danny's going to talk about this, but being in contact with your executive committee member that oversees your committee, working closely with the SAGES staff, engaging your committee members, uh, being mindful of budget policies and procedures, supporting the SAGES Foundation, and taking the FUSE exam. <laughs> Those are the responsibilities of a committee chair. Pitching ideas for new projects, basically. You have a new, 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 new idea. You go through your committee chair, members of the executive, president-elect is a very good one because they're planning for their term and it's a year in advance. Uh, and you want to get feedback. You want to get people that are going to tell you why this isn't going to work uh, or what you have to do to make it work. Because uh, nothing's, obviously it takes a lot of um, discussion. Nothing's perfect, just born perfect. You want to express your passion um, your, and, and build momentum for your idea. Um, before it even before you even pitch it, uh, you want to write it down. Um, you want to look at the purpose, the timeline, deliverables, the budget, the impact. Why is it so important for this organization to do this thing right now? You have to convince people. Why is it important? It is important. It might be super important. People might not get it at first. And it might take a few uh, few times to to get them. And it's great to be able to get on the board agenda if you have the support of the president-elect and, and then, or, or the executive that you may get 10 minutes and that's really how your project's gonna take off. So my take home points are that Sages needs awesome people and that's obviously you're the awesome people. 
um, new ideas and new voices are, are critical to, to the health of any organization, and it's, and it's, and it's what SAGES is all about. And I, and I think that SAGES really re rewards our engagement and our work and our creativity. And it, it is nice to have a project with a beginning and an end, because it, it helps you like deliver something. Um, they need to see, SAGES needs to see what, what, what you're about, what your passion is, what your ideas are, but in the end, 100% that SAGES is worth it. Thank you.